All right, this is the second part of lecture two. And remember, our task is to pick up some blocks that our camera sees with our robot arm. So the first thing that we've done is we figured out how do we figure out what is our objects and what is our background. We did that by thresholding, and we found an optimal way to pick that threshold value. Now we need to figure out, well, which pixels are grouped together? Because if we can figure out how many groups there are, then we can talk about how many blocks are in the image and then we can talk about statistics of each of those connected group of pixels. So in order to do this, we're going to do something called connected components analysis. And the first thing we need to define is what do we mean by something being connected? And there are two different notions of connectivity in a 2D uh, planar image. The first one is for connectivity, and the idea is I have some pixel uh, which is specified by its row and its column and it is connected to the pixel that's above it, which is the row minus one in the same column, the pixel to the right, which is one column, is C plus one, the pixel beneath it, which is a row plus one, and then um, the one to the left. Now this is four connectivity, MATLAB implements, you can specify either four connectivity or eight connectivity. Eight connectivity adds in the diagonals. And so usually these are you know, just a specification that you have to choose. And we say that a connected component is a set of pixels, and we're going to call that the set S, such that if you pick any two pixels, for instance, let's say that you pick P and you pick uh, P prime, and they're both in S. Well, this is a, they are part of the same connected component if there is a four connected path between them and this path is contained in S. So what do I mean by a four connected path? It means that we can walk from P to P prime without ever leaving S, where every step we take is inside S and is following this four connectivity rule. And so here P and P prime are connected in the same connected component. And so you know, the first step is you're figuring out you know, we have these connected components, we'd like to identify them, and we'd also like to label them, to give them a unique label. So here we've labeled the top left one one, and then two, and three, for three different connected components. These images are taken from uh, MATLAB's description, which I've given you a link to in the notes, so you can try that out. Um, and then usually at the end of that process, then you want to assign a, a pseudo color to each of your images. That way when you display it on the screen, each of these uh, items that we're looking at are, are very distinct. And so the process that we use uh, in the book, there's many ways to do this. And the process in the book is a, a two-step uh, process which does two raster scans. A raster scan, we start uh, at the top left and we just like you're reading a book you go left to right then you go to the next line left to right and the next line left to right and what we do is we move along there uh, we simply uh, iterate through our pixels and so we until we find a pixel that is an object mm -hmm. and so we start in this top left and we move over to the right there are no object pixels in here, so we bump down to the next level. We come over and we detect uh, a point that is an object. And so we assign that. We look at a list of how many objects that we discovered so far. It says that we've found none so far, so we assign this to be a, a one. And then we move to the next step. Uh, and we see this is also an object, so we check to its left and above it. And we see, oh, we've already detected one. Uh, and so we're going to assign this one the same value that we see it uh, um, of a pixel that we've already seen. So we'll assign it the minimum of our left or our above one. So this will also be one. Move to the next one. It's going to be one. And then we have no more objects. We go to our next line. We come here. This one is an object, so we compare it to above it and to the left of it. And we pick the minimum that is an object. So that will be one as well. This one, the, both the left and the above one are one. So one and one. And then we go to the fourth line and the one above it is one, so we'll assign these all to be ones. And this proceeds, now we go to the next line, there's no objects, we go to the sixth line here, we're coming through here, and we find an object, and the left and the right are not an object. So this is a, a new object that we, had, we assume, 
something that we haven't seen before. So we're going to give it a new number and increment the total number of pixels that we've seen. So this will be a 2. We come over here and we see what appears to us to be a new object. There's nothing to the left or the right. So we'll assign this the value 3. This is also going to be 3 because the left one is 3. And we go to the next line, we come across here. This first pixel that we hit, we compare and we pick the minimum of its left and its right that is an object. So this is also going to be 2. We come over here and this pixel, the one above it, is a 3, so we'll set it to be 3. This one is a 3 because the left and the above are 3. Then we go to the next line, we come through here. This is again going to be a 2. Uh, this one will be a 2, and this one will be a 2. Now we send this one to be a 2 as well, a 2. But when we hit here, this is a, this left is a 2 and the one above it is a 3. And so what we're going to have to build is something we call an equivalence array. And the equivalence array tells us that the 2 and the 3 are the same value. And so we're going to continue through here giving it the minimum value. So this will be a 2. We go to the next line. Pop down here. This one, the left and above it, there is no pixel. So let's set this to be 4, 4, 4. Now we hit this pixel. And the one above it is a 2, and the one to the left is a 4. We pick the minimum, so this is 2, 2, 2. We're going to continue through. This is 2. Go to the next line. This one will be 4, 4, 4. But now we hit this to be 2, and we go all the way through here. Sorry, I clicked ahead. And so if you look in the side B, after our first raster scan, um, we've, say, we've detected four different values. Um, but we've detected there's equivalence between 2 and 3 and between uh, 4 and uh, 2. Um, and these are these two pixels that detected these equivalences. And so then we've done one pass through our image and we've identified the connected components but we've subdivided it too much. So then we need to go through another pass through this image and uh, for each pixel we compare it to the equivalence list and give the minimum value. So ones are all equivalent to ones, but when you come over here, the twos are equivalent to twos, the threes are equivalent to twos, and two is smaller than three, and four is smaller than uh, four is larger than two and three. So it's they're all assigned to be twos. And so at the end of the second pass, we've assigned everything a unique label if they're in a separate connected component, and that finishes the connected component analysis. Um, all we do next is if we want uh, we can assign these label values of very different colors so that it's easy to differentiate